name is Wendy Tucker. I'm the director of the Bermuda Underwater Exploration Institute, which is a mouthful, so we call it BUEI. And we opened in July of 1997, and we're here to show the world the ocean. We had a vast collection of shipwreck artifacts, and the ships are from around the world. A shipwreck's fascinating. It's like you have your own personal little detective plot. You find a shipwreck, you don't know the name, the origin, where it was going, and by the artifacts, then you can sort of put the story together. We're surrounded by them. <laughs> and all nationalities, all shapes, sizes. Uh, we've had, well, 1595 up to modern day, we've had super tankers on the rocks. And part of the reason is that the reef barrier is so close to the south shore, and it goes out just over eight miles on the north shore, so ships cut in close. So we were notorious. I think we were called the Isle of Devils, and also Shakespeare thought we were interesting, and then later on it became the Bermuda Triangle. And I have to tell you, everyone that comes through here says, do you have anything on the Bermuda Triangle? And that's constant, our modern day claim to fame. Here we have a shipwreck map, and it gives you an idea of the shipwrecks around Bermuda. And this rail shows you how we discovered some of the shipwrecks. There's a probably between 200, 300 shipwrecks, and every time we have a storm, we find something different. So the sand moves, and we discover something more. We're an old Bermudian family, and so the ocean is in our blood and has been for about 400 years. So it was just a natural thing, I think, for my father growing up around the ocean to be interested in exploring. And of course, he discovered the shipwreck in 1951. It was a Spanish shipwreck, and she was coming up from the what we can talk about is the New World, and that was the South America, and going back to the Old World, which was Spain. And they'd come up past Bermuda because they'd travel on the Gulf Stream, and then they knew basically that they got to Bermuda, they'd turn right and they'd pick up the currents and the trade winds and get home. Well, anyway, the ship didn't make it. It landed on the reefs here. So my father discovered the shipwreck, and at the time he discovered it, he didn't go back for about four or five years. And then he went back, and I think the first or second day he was diving, he found treasure. And then he found an emerald and gold cross, and it was absolutely beautiful. And that was the beginning of his life in treasure hunting and ocean exploration. When he found the cross, it was the most valuable piece found in the Western Hemisphere. Then it was stolen. My father sold the collection for a very fair price to the Bermuda government. They were displaying it down at the aquarium. The Queen was coming to uh, Bermuda and was going to open the Maritime Museum government very kindly asked my father if he would present it and show it to the Queen. My father likes to joke a lot and we well, my mother and I were sort of outside up at the Maritime Museum and my father started to unpack the collection that had been packed up from the aquarium and all of a sudden he said, where's the real cross? So there were like four or five people in the room and or they ignored him. And he said, where's the real cross? And somebody said, you know, that's not even funny. He said, I've got paint on my hand. It was a professional job because they'd put an exact reproduction in its place. If you walk around the room, you can see the front of the cross and then you can see the back. The back was very ornate and did come off. And in the back of it, we believe was a religious artifact. Uh, there's an outline that something was definitely there and it's very pretty and we haven't seen it or heard about it since. The treasure wasn't the pool, it was the interest, the discovery. 
Every day was a different day. Now there's, of course, shipwreck laws, and if you find anything, you have to get permission from the Bermuda government for us to go out and even just look at it. And then if you have permission, then you, there's further steps that you take. But before that, it was open if you found anything, if you wanted to get rid of it. Uh, you had to offer it to the Bermuda government first, and they had first option on it, and if not, you know, it was yours. And basically, my father kept everything and restored it, and we just had this huge collection. We have qualified educators here, and we design all our programs from scratch so that you won't see anything like what we do anywhere else. And it's usually based on projects around Bermuda. And we talk about William Beebe. He did the first deep dive in the world and it was just off Bermuda. Then we have uh, the Bermuda Sea Level Project that my father's doing with the Geological Survey of Canada. And we started it 18,000 years ago and now we're up to about 2,000. We do incorporate the rest of the world. Right now we're doing the Arctic and the Antarctic. Of course, we have the Titanic exhibit, so we're doing that also. The shark cage was my idea. Uh, Peter Benchley was a very good friend of my family, and he was coming back from South Africa, been diving in a shark cage with the great white sharks and stopped by here in Bermuda on his way home. And we were just sitting on the porch one afternoon and Peter was saying, the shark was huge and he wanted in. And he said, you know, never ever experienced anything like that. And he said, the shark just had a vengeance. He was in a bad, bad mood. We were sitting there laughing and teasing him. And then I thought, hmm. This would be fun. How many people in the world are going to experience a great white shark attack? You know, hopefully not a lot. So I thought, oh, this would make a great exhibit. And from the giggles and screams that we get down there, it works well. Throughout the exhibits, there's always something to learn and what we do conservation uh, with fish and our shipwrecks and of course these artifacts. It's an ideal place to start your vacation. It's an entire family experience because not only are you engaging your children, you're engaged. <laughs>